So something else I was going to start doing on the show before we kind of get into our topics is like share some conservation stuff that's going on around the country, particularly like I want to find um, public land cleanups that are going on. Uh, you know how you uh, 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 like some place like BHA will have a get together on a public land, clean the pick up trash, fill up freaking truckloads of trash on the public land. So if you guys are ever like at, in your home state or county you live in, um, have something you want to like promote on here, I'd be happy to like just talk about it for just a few seconds and, and give it a shout out. Um, this week, if you're in North Carolina, BHA has what they're calling a trashy squirrel cleanup. Um, they go squirrel hunting and clean up the public land while they're squirrel hunting. Uh, but if you're in Alexander, North Carolina, that's happening at the uh, Sandy Mush Game Land on the 4th, which is Saturday. And then they're having one um, also on the 4th, same kind of deal, trashy squirrel cleanup um, in the Jordan Game Land, which is in Apex, North Carolina. So anybody from North Carolina is on. Go over and help them people clean their all the crap out that people leave on public land. Man, it's uh, trash on public land in certain areas, particularly in one certain county around here, are just horrible. Um, there was a mattress oh. laying, laying in the parking lot of the public land I was at today. Someone just dumped a mattress off, you know. It's like... I had... Uh, yeah, we, we got at one spot here where I've been tempted to put up a camera because there's so many people dumping in the uh, parking lot. Yeah. And just recently... Somebody tied up a dog and left it in the parking lot in this cold, tied it to the uh, post. And I mean, it's not a parking lot to get used a lot, which is why people dump trash there. Yeah. And uh, it looked like the dog had been there a day or two. Um, and uh, somebody turned it in, the officials came and got it, but it was it was on, uh, you know, local news or whatever. But right Gosh. on Rome Pond, they uh, <laughs> tied it really? to the I don't, you know, I wonder if that was innocent or, or what, because it could be just somebody finds the dog st standing there and thinks, oh, the hunter lost his dog, he'll be back or something. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you got what if somebody doesn't come back? You can't just leave it tied to a post. Yeah. I mean, this time of year, especially, it's not like people are going in and out of those parking lots like, you know, a couple times a day, or at least I wouldn't think so. Right. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're right, though. Maybe they just assumed the dog, they were hunting in there and the dog, um was lost but I, I got a uh interesting story for you about trash and public land yeah so um we had a guy on uh hunting beast forum page the website um oh this goes back a few years it's probably five six years maybe even longer than that but he would uh uh his whole method for hunting and, and scouting was to find areas full of trash and hunt there because he figured uh, the more the trash, the more the hunters that were there and they're were, they were coming back because there was deer there. So he would try to find shell casings under trees. He said, if there's shell casings under trees, like uh, like at that time we used to be shotgun only in Wisconsin. Yeah. You could see shotgun shells laying under trees where people hunted, right? Yeah. He'd look for those shotgun shells thinking that, uh, well, here's the spot where deer come by during daylight because this guy's shooting at them. So he I'm like, well, you're targeting people's hunting spots, you know? And he's like, well, if they're going to leave trash, it's their problem, you know? So, <laughs> so he'd there you go. soda cans and then he'd fine tune it to find the bullet shells. I guess that's one way of scouting, huh? That is one way, everybody. Yeah. Hot tip for everybody. <laughs> I found, I found a good spot today then. I, uh, yeah. You know, it, the stand was in a good, pretty decent spot, but like screw in steps all the way up to it. And then. Uh, you know, lock on up there. And the guy had at the bottom, there's like three Mountain Dew cans and then a bottle of like dough pee at the bottom of the stand. I'm just like, gosh. Yeah. I try to bring out more than I take in with me, but uh, you can only carry so much trash with you. Too. Yeah. It's filling all your pockets and then it's causing problems. It's making noise in your pockets. Yeah. And uh, then you got to do crap with it. Like back of my truck starts filling up with it. I try, but it's like, it's a never-ending battle, and one guy can't handle it. I like to clean up things. Um, yeah. I know uh, we did one. Uh, there was one that they were they did in Kentucky at some of the public land I hunt, and, I mean, just truckloads of it. They picked up out of the parking lots and down the roads and everything else, you know. It's like, man. 
it's pretty sad. It's uh, I don't think it's anything new though. It's um, been happening at least for as long as I've been around. There's always dumps and everything else um, on on public land. Something else that annoys the crap out of me, man, is uh, I was scouting the other day and I was in this like thermal hub. It looks like a beautiful spot. And I walked in there and there's like an old ground blind that's like half decroted and half of it was blown across the um, the hub. And I don't know, the chairs were, you know, spread out everywhere. And I'm like, a lot. it's like, I don't know. There's something about like, I get excited to go into those like cool, like spots where there's a nice Creek and it's supposed to look a certain way in my mind. You get down there and there's someone's crap laying everywhere. It's like, ah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not under any delusion that any place anywhere near me hasn't been touched by a person. Obviously, it has. Right. But you, you still want to see that pristine look to right. it, like it looks like nobody's been there. Like, there, you don't leave a footprint. You know, you don't right. saw down from trees. You don't, uh, you know, <laughs> drive your truck through the, the, the forest. You don't, you know, dump right. garbage. You don't do things like that or put up giant rusty tree stands and leave them there forever. Yep. You, you kind of leave the place the way it is for everybody to enjoy the beauty and stuff. It's kind of an eyesore, you know? Um, yeah. I have no, I, I don't mind one bit if somebody's got equipment out there, they're legally using to hunt right. or gather Intel. Right. But when you abandon it or you um, just leave your trash lay where you, you sit, that's not right. Right. Something else that's really bad around here is um, in the hill country, Four wheeler trails, people cutting four wheeler trails through the public land. That's always like, that's always disappointing to see too, because, um, you know, we're, we're not allowed to do that in Indiana on public land. Um, so you're having this in your head, like, I'm going to go two miles into this spot. And then someone, you get out there and there's like a beat down four wheeler trail coming in from the private land somewhere. You know, it's like, gosh, I worked all it's this. disappointing when I hunt places that allow ATVs because you, because, I just don't hunt like that. And then you get back there and there's just people just buzz back yeah. there in five minutes and it just took you two hours to walk back there. Yeah. Oh, if it was legal, whatever, you know, I'm just like, yeah, I know. It I, is I, it is. Still... Yeah. Yeah. In this case, it, uh, it's not, and it's, it's just it kind of, it just puts a damper on you. Cause you're, it's, it's hard work to get back in there, you know, and then, you know, the public land by me, I mean, there's trails out there for logging and for DNR access and stuff. And uh, I don't even think those should be there, but they are. Yeah. And uh, nobody can drive on them. But a couple of years back, they did something where they started letting disabled people drive those trails. Mm -hmm. And they let them shoot out of vehicles. And, uh, like, obviously, I don't have anything against disabled people. But we got a guy in town who is, uh, um, he's permanently disabled. And, uh I don't know how, because he walks around just fine. He pheasant hunts from dawn to dusk every day and taxpayers pay for it. And he, uh, I know he has a local job for cash working for, uh, uh, helps out a, a landscaper, mm -hmm. and, uh, works all day lifting timbers and stuff, but he's too disabled to work. He does that for cash. So he gets a big paycheck and he gets to drive his truck out there and hunt. And you see this guy drive way out into the woods, park his truck and shoot deer out of his windows and stuff. And it's just like, yeah. yeah, and everybody shakes their head. Everybody knows the warden knows and stuff. Years ago, they used to arrest people like that. They used to uh, set up stings to catch them, and nowadays they don't because uh, they're too worried about getting into some discrimination battle or something, you know. And yeah, it's a shame that people have to do that. I mean, I would take no pride in hunting like that, but some people do. I mean, that's just the way they are. Hey, everybody! If you like the channel, make sure you subscribe right here. And if you like the clips, I got two more options for you. Two options right here. Subscribe right here. See you guys.